In this video we're going to look at the process for licensed hotels to complete a bid and we're going to look at some of the steps required beforehand to ensure that the bid process is as smooth as possible. This is the Lanyon login screen and we're going to go ahead and we're going to log in. Once you've logged in you'll be taken directly to the property management homepage and if you manage multiple properties you'll be given a screen like this where you can select which hotel you wish to manage. If you only manage one hotel, then it will automatically take you to the hotel associated with your user ID. This is the project uh, property management homepage. Uh, we'll have a quick look at this. There's a message center at the top, so automatic messages will be sent to you within the system. Uh, notifications such as when bids are going to become due and when invitations have been sent. An activity box here that tells you uh, details about RFPs and what status they're on and what, what might have changed since you last came into the system. In the middle you get a, uh, a window that will show you what RFPs are coming up which are due and which were due in the past few days. And then on the right an RFP summary for the current, current contracting period. Uh, this will detail everything by uh, the status of the bid so we can see that this hotel has one bid submitted and one new RFP uh, and there are two in total. As a hotel you won't have all of these individual things, I have these because I'm an administrator, but you will have this property management menu which allows you to get to the different areas of Lanyon. Uh, the key one that we're going to look at first is the property profile. So this is a profile uh, for your hotel and this uh, summarizes and categorizes all of the information stored in the Lanyon system for your hotel. As you can see here it's broken down into a variety of categories and then beneath that we have all of the fields associated with that category. You'll see that some of these have a yellow triangle on them. This means that that section has not been completed yet and approved for use. Uh, which means any information there won't be used for RFPs and it won't be used for other Lanyon processes, things like their corporate directory, which is used to... If a corporation is looking for uh, new hotels in, say, London, and they can refer to the corporate directory, they can put in a variety of criteria, and they can find hotels that match um, their needs and they can select them for the RFP process. So having as much information completed here not only helps to promote your hotel through that channel, it also helps you uh, increase the efficiency of the, um, of the RFP process. So let's have a quick look at one of, the, uh, one of these categories. Let's have a look. We're, we're on general profile, so look, we'll have a look at that one. So if I scroll down a little bit, you can see that I have the name of my hotel, address, city, country details. Then we have a general section, so some contact information brand ownership, my hotel ratings, and languages spoken at the hotel. Now, you will have noticed that some of these fields are highlighted in red. Before any, ca any category can be completed, you will have to complete at least the mandatory, at least the mandatory fields. Um, if we can reset this back to nothing. When we try to save changes here, we'll get an, an error saying unit of measurement is required. So we cannot save this category and approve it until we change this and we choose kilometers. And then if we scroll down, we choose save changes and that will save the changes. And we can see that there's no triangle here. So we can see that that category has been approved. So this hotel needs to go through quite a few of the other sections and to add in the pertinent information. Multimedia is quite an important one to have a look at as well. This is where you can add images for your hotel. So again, these populate into the corporate directory and into other places as well. Um, it's a fairly simple system. You choose add new. You'll be given some options for ca caption, rank, uh, a description. And then at the bottom, you can choose a file. Then you select a file, so blank.jpg. And then we choose save changes. Oh, file and the caption is possibly required because you can see that that's highlighted in red. So we'll call that test file. And if we choose save changes, that now goes through. And we can see our nice blue blank image has been added. So next step will be to have a look at some of the uh, rate plans and how we can make that process as efficient as possible.
So we'll go to the menu, we'll choose property rate plans, and we'll load this up. And again, this is split into two sections. So there are default rate plans at the bottom, and they have different names and they have different rate levels, government or corporate transient. And they have a status list here, in progress or approved. No matter what you try and do, uh, if you are trying to complete a bid and you cannot add a rate plan, it is always because the rate plan that you're trying to add has not been approved in this section. So if I go now quickly over to the RFP section, see that we've got uh, an RFP training one here, uh, and would you like to participate? If I choose yes, at the moment, because none of my rate plans are approved that I could be using with this RFP, you'll see that there's nothing in this drop-down box. So whenever you see this issue occurring where there's nothing in this drop-down box for you to choose, uh, it's best to go back to the invitation email that you'll have received from Supranational Hotels and have a look because on there will be listed the rate plan that you want. So for this RFP, I happen to know that it's the fixed consortia uh, rate. So if we go to back into property rate plans, we can see that in here, there's the fixed consortia rate and we can see that he's currently in progress. So we could fill this out automatically. And while that would not necessarily be a problem for consortia rates where parity is required, it might be a bit more uh, annoying in the client negotiated ones where we might want to keep changing things. We don't want to have to keep coming into the rate plan section every time we want to complete an RFP. So if we go back up to this top section, we can create what's called a rate comparison template or a comparison rate template. So if I just click on the big create button, I can pick a template name. So let's say 2018 consortia template. It's automatically filled in my two room types for me and my default currency. This is information that comes from the, the property profile. And here we have a rate table. And in here, we're just going to put in the dates that we want. So say 01 January 2018 until the 31st of December. 2018 and now I'm just going to fill in some generic rates because this is in a real hotel so I'm going to say 600 for the rack uh, 500 for corporate 400 for consortia 300 for consortia net 200 for government and military and I have two room types selected here so I need to put in a second set of rates here so look, let's let's up it by 100 pounds we'll say 700 here uh, that's 7,000 though of course 700 600 6,000, 500, 500, 400, 400, 300, 300. Perfect. If we scroll to the bottom, we see uh, flag is approved, rejected, or in progress. If we leave it in progress or rejected, we won't be able to use it on the bid. So we're going to flag it as approved and choose save changes. So we now have a rate template up here. And the way the rate template works is I can now attach this template to any of these rate plans. Uh, so rather than have to fill in each of these every time, I can now fill out multiple rate plans and fill up a large portion of the information from this template. So let's start, let's not start with the fixed consortia because that's, uh, that's what we're going to use. Let's say that we're going to add this to, let's add it to the consortia bar with ceiling. So very, at the very top here, we have a click here to link a template. So I click here to link my template. And in this case, it shows us the one, but if we had three or four, then there would be three or four different templates here and we could choose whichever one we wanted to add. So now when I choose select, it fills up the rate plan with the things that I've put onto the template. So now I just need to add what the dynamic ceiling would be. So I'm gonna say that the dynamic ceiling is always gonna be equal to rack. And I, I still have my 7,000 in there, unfortunately you're just going to have to pay a lot to stay in the single rack room. And now I just need to pick some criteria. So tax and service are always included at my hotel. This is going to be for a consortia, so I'm going to make it commissionable. And the hotel's standard commission percentage is 10. A cancellation period of 24 hours. And we're going to flag this rate plan as approved and choose save changes. And there we can see that we now have the name of the rate plan, type of the rate plan, template that's been assigned to it and we can see that it's approved. So if I now choose the fixed consortia rate, we can see that actually there's actually already some rates on here, but this is only for one room type and it's it's not it's not currently approved so it can't be used. So 
We don't want to have to keep switching between one room type and two room types depending on which rate plan we're using for a bit. So if we add this consortia template, it's going to automatically fill everything out for us. So this is going to be our consortia rate. So we're going to match this to our generic consortia rate so that we don't fall foul of any parity problems. And here we can see tax included, service included, commissionable, yes. This is at 15%, so we'll bring that back down to 10. And cancellation is at 24 hours. If we choose save changes, now this one is approved as well. Um, so if we we have this as this two, two rooms are defined on this comparison template, but say we only wanted one because we did just look at that rate plan and there was only one on there. So let's use this icon here, which is going to allow us to copy the, compar the, the comparison rate template. And I'm going to put in 2018 consortia template and I'm going to say one room type and all I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this second room type and I'm going to delete out these rates here and then I'm going to choose save changes. Now I'm not going to add this to one of my rate plans because I'm not going to use it all of the time. In fact let's say that this was going to be used for the executive room type rather than the standards, so we'll save changes there. So we have these two uh, on the one that's attached and you can you can see that this is attached. If there's an X here, meaning you can delete it, it means that this template is not attached to any of the rate plans below, but this one doesn't have the X, so we can't delete it at the moment because it's attached to these two, these two rate plans. So let's say that we only wanted to offer an executive to some, to some of our, our clients. By having this rate template here, later on when we get into the bid, we can assign it to that bid without assigning it to the rate plan. So if you don't do it that way, and you don't have to, but I think this is the right way to do it, by changing rate comparison templates on an RFP bid, you bypass, um, you bypass a lot of repetition. You don't want to be coming into the rate plan section and constantly moving these templates around dependent on the rate plan that you're using for the RFP, you want to be able to apply the rate templates and the, the different kinds of templates that you've got on the RFP. That means that once you have your basic rate plan set up, whenever you come in, you just need to enter the bid and add on the rate comparison template that you want and you will get the, the things that you want and you can do it all directly on the bid. There's no need to keep switching things around here which if there's more than one person working on the hotel can be confusing and when it's the very busy time of year changing everything on the rate plan and then not changing it back for another bid or not updating it can lead to you offering the wrong rates to a client which at best can be a bit of an annoyance to clear out and at worst it can damage your ability to bid effectively for business so I think that this is the way to go but you know you can simply change uh, the rate plan, the rate the, the comparison template assigned to the rate plan in here before completing each bid. Okay, so now we're gonna dive back over to our property R R RFPs and we're gonna have a look at this RFP training account again. And this time we're gonna see if there's any rate plans that we can choose. And there we go. Uh, we see our fixed consortia rate plan is sitting there ready to use. So the first thing that we would need to do let me just resize this for you. There we go. It's much better. The first thing you need to do is that you've checked the account documents. So there is a link here, and this link contains any documents that the corporation will have attached to the RFP. These can be things such as terms and conditions. Uh, very important if it's a consortia bid because you want to see what the uh, minimum rates might be for a particular district. You might want to see... Um, what kind of commission you're going to have to offer and um, other things that you'll see more commonly with corporate RFPs are things like room night documents and um, city locations predicted spend um, and sometimes depending on where the bid has come from in terms of other systems you might find a list of user defined questions and um, we'll have a look at those when we get to them in the bid so once you have uh, clicked on the account documents and in this case, there are no documents attached to this RFP, but there would normally be a list of documents here. Once you've reviewed those, 
you can tick here to say that you've read them and what we're going to do is we, we're actually only going to offer one room type for this RFP so rather than update the rate plan with the the single room executive comparison rate template we're going to click on show rate details here and here at the very top it says link comparison rate template so here if we click on this link we can see the two rate templates that we created a few minutes ago so if we choose the second one and we choose select we'll now find that our single room type is on there and that it is the executive room so room type one executive and we can see that it's brought in these individual things so in this case if we want to let us say that this is a consortia this consortia um, puts a lot of business out but in return for being a part of their program you have to give them slightly higher commissions so 15 percent if i change it on this bid it doesn't change on the rate comparison template or on the rate plan it will only change on this bid which means that i can i can tweak this offer based on who I'm offering it to. Now, if I change that 15% on the rate plan, and then I don't change it back next time, every subsequent RFP I complete with that rate plan is going to have a 15% commission percentage on there, which I don't want to have on there. This is just for this corporation or this, this uh, consortia, because they're going to put a lot of business my way. So it, it, it is overall much easier to control your rates, your rate comparison templates and things like policies on rate plans on a bid level rather than doing them on the rate plan level. Um, it just allows you to be more malleable with how you give out your offers without the, um, the associated problems of doing it on a rate plan and having to keep up with everything that's on each individual rate plan and having to check it every time. So once we've made our appropriate changes here, we choose Save Changes, and this is then going to take us into the main window of the bid. In the top left, we have a filter, and we can use this to filter which questions we're seeing. So all, of course, shows you all of them, um, and you can see which ones are mandatory, because they're highlighted in red. You can start to add in other information, so total number of suites, maybe we want to say 150. Uh, total number of non-smoking rooms and suites, 150. Uh, across the number of floors, four, 47, four, <laughs> four is more usual. Uh, property location, we could say that it's downtown. And you can see these, uh, you see these questions already have answers in them. So this is where information is being pulled from the property profile that we looked at earlier. Uh, so having filled it out once at the property profile level, we now don't need to fill it out on the RFP level. Um, it, you imagine if you hadn't filled it out at the property profile level, you would then be having to answer every RFP and tell them th that you accept at American Express. In, in this case, those fields aren't mandatory, but on the vast majority of RFPs, payments, uh, GDS codes, that sort of thing are always, are always mandatory. Um, other filters that we have, blank, we can have a look at some of the custom fields, blank customs, Blank mandatory is usually the one that you want to look at first. This will show you any field that's mandatory, which doesn't have an answer. So if we just hop back to all, let's just take out, let's just take out the name of this hotel and let's take out its address as well. If I now save changes, and now when I select blank mandatory, we'll see that we now have three fields there. So property name, we can pop back in. Uh, property address and property chain representative submits that information here is correct and binding for the length of the agreement it gives you a yes no option if you choose no then a corporation is likely to um, view that particularly unfavorably and um, because you're saying that you won't honor the agreement that you're making here so you would make that yes and choose save changes um, you can also uh, go through the RFP by module, so they're, they're kind of self-explanatory. Property basic is the basic information about your hotel. Client specific is questions specific that this client wants answered. Um, some of them you won't be able to edit, so 
three letter IMF currency code, things like that. So uh, room type and number of rooms of that room type are all ported in automatically. What you will also find is uh, that the client specific module has what are called user defined questions. So they're, they're in a big block like this. Let's go to the start of the block. And what this, uh, what these are for, um, RFPs are created from the vast majority of RFPs in uh, the hotel industry are created from one standard, which is called the GBTA standard. And this defines around 700 questions that take in every aspect of the business that a hotel might do. Uh, it breaks them down into the module list that we saw a minute ago. So property basic, client specific, safety and security, transport. Um, and then this is used uh, across multiple systems and by the vast majority of TMCs and corporate clients as a way of soliciting information. But because it's a standard, because it's a uh, an all-purpose uh, standard, it must allow for some customization. And the way that they choose to do this customization is there are there are actually two blocks of custom questions. There is this block here, which lives in the client specific module. And there's actually another one in the groups and meetings module. And this allows uh, a corporation or a TMC to ask uh, very specific questions related to their clients or to, um, or to their, uh, to make sure that you have filled out the RFP correctly. So you're aware of certain conditions or if it's a consortium and you're adding in, uh, or if you're, you're having to say, I agree to a fee, there might be a, a set of tiers for that fee and you would be able to select that from here. Uh, with corporates, it, it tends to be more specific. So there can be some very specific security questions. Um, Pepsi, for instance, always ask in their custom questions if the bar is a Pepsi pouring bar or if they pour Coca-Cola um because that's important to them their travelers um so it's always important to check the user defined questions as well because even though they're not sometimes made mandatory if a corporation or a tmc has made the effort to add them on it's usually something that they want to know so once you've checked your blank mandatory and your mandatory fields um it's then best to um check the custom fields um, and there, there you will see them in a huge block. And if it's, uh, yeah, so that's just the first block because it's the second block is in a module, it's in the groups and meetings module. Once you've been through the entire bid and you're satisfied that you've added as much information as you can, you've answered all of the blank mandatory questions. So when you choose blank mandatory, there's nothing here. Choose save changes, and then scroll to the bottom of the page and choose next. This will take us to the last stage of the bid. So this is the review and approve stage. So you, this is broken into two sections. The top section is the rate plan. So we can see um, this is the room that we offered. These are the rates that are going to be sent. So our, our offer of 400 and this corporation or this TMC wants to compare that with our publicly available government or military rate. And then obviously the little rate policies there as well. Um, and then in the in the section below, we actually have the entire RFP uh, and all of our answers have been loaded in here and we can uh, filter this. So custom, blank, mandatory and fee related. Um, especially with corporates, you want to check that you have got the right uh, percentages and fees in for things like service charges um, and taxes. Uh, here we see the meetings module uses to find questions. So these, as you can see, there wasn't... Uh, there wasn't an answer field for these modules because these questions haven't been included and that's why they were not appearing, but that's where the second block of custom questions comes in. And about half of the time, these meeting module user defined questions are, are actually used for meetings related information. And the rest of the time they're actually used as a secondary block. So if a, a corporation or a consortia has more than 30 questions that they need to ask you specifically, They'll put the first 30 in the cut in these user defined fields, and then they will put any additional ones in here. So they're not necessarily related to meetings. So if you see 
uh, custom questions with a high number, sort of six, 668 onwards. Um, make sure that uh, you're clear on whether they uh, relate to uh, a meetings requirement or whether they uh, are a general term of the bid. Once we're happy with everything and we've been through, um, we've checked all of our answers, we're happy with the rate plan, we click on I have reviewed this bid, its terms and conditions and approve it for submission and then we choose complete bid. If we saw something that we weren't sure about, so we can see there's no property sales or general email address on here, I'm like, hmm, I really should add that. So I can see that it's field 20, so if I choose back, it will now take me back to the second step. I can find the field that I want, so if I choose all, I can then find the page it's going to be that first one because field 20 is going to be between 1 and 50. But I can use that uh, breakdown to find the section that I want. So we're on this page already. And I find field 20. And there we go, property sales at email address. So let's say... Now if I choose save changes, I choose next. I can see that that information is now appearing on the summary. One other thing to note when you're filling out fields, um, sometimes you can come across questions. So I think one of the ones that I answered earlier automatically was the location of the hotel. So there he is. So if this is uh, your first time, you might look at, say, property location. Oh, I, I know where we are. And then you're presented with ADSRT. And you're th you think, hmm. I don't know which of these is city centre, for example. Um, I might take a guess that A is an airport, but w R, S, T. So there's a question mark here. Next to every question, there's a question mark. If I click on this question mark, I get this nice little pop-up. Gives me the field description, property location, and then help. So enter only one of the following acceptable answers. A equals airport. D equals downtown city center, S equals suburb, R equals rural, and T equals resort. If I close him, and we'll change to city center, because that's, well, that's what we've got anyway. So let's say we're now an airport hotel. The hotel has been moved brick by brick from the city center out to the airport. So we're now an airport hotel. So we we'll save changes. And then when we go to the final page, if we switch to all, and we scroll down, we can find that that A value is in there now. So we have still got the bid reviewed and approved for submission. And then you choose complete bid um, and that will approve the bid for you. And um, then when uh, it's approved, it's submitted by the Supranational Hotel staff and they will get it off to the corporation as soon as possible. Um, the sooner that you complete a bid, uh, the better it is. Uh, as soon as it gets into the corporation, they, they're able to start assessing and benchmarking it. Um, so they can start to compare your offer with what their expectations are. And the sooner you can get that process started with them, if you can get your bid in for other hotels in your area, you have more time to agree something that is mutually beneficial to both parties. Um, and subsequent hotels will have to have less time to do that and they will have to try a bit harder to try and match your offer. So once you get an invite email notification from Supranational Hotels, it is best to try and action the bid within a few days. And certainly if you leave it until the last day before the deadline or even worse, the deadline day, and you come across, say there are some user defined fields in there and you don't know what the answers are and then you have to delay by a day or two while you find out whether uh, some small piece of information, uh, what the actual answer is, that's going to delay your bid and it's going to make your bid look less desirable. The reason corporations put in this system of uh, invites and deadlines and renegotiation dates is because they have a schedule that they need to meet because they need to be able to do things like budgeting for the travel for the next year and things like that. So being late on these points is not a great way to really get over to a corporate client that you are... A serious hotel and that you are you're keen and ready to do business with them so it's always advisable to get those bids in 
and completed as soon as possible. Um, we are always keen to help. Um, if you have questions, you can always send those to rfp at supranational.com and we will happily answer them. So we will just complete this bid. I will get a dialogue window. You won't get a window like this because um, uh, I'm an administrator and you, you would not be able to submit a hotel like this. Uh, you would not be able to submit a bid like this, sorry. Um, and we can see now that if we just take a moment to refresh this page, we can now see that our, our RFP is approved pending submit. So that is as far as you will be able to take a bid. Once it's on approved, um, the staff at Supranational Hotels will see that and then they will do the final step to submit it. So that has been the process of how to uh, go through your uh, property profile, have a look at all the categories, see what information is required, get that as full, full up as possible. We've looked at uh, how to assess your rate templates, how to create them, um, what they're used for both in relation to setting up the rate plans and using them on a bid. And we looked at completing an RFP from the first step of adding a rate plan and changing that rate plan specific for this client. We went looked at the second stage with answering questions and how to filter questions. And then in the last stage, reviewing the bid and approving it for submission. Um, I hope that's all been clear. As I say, you are more than free to send any questions that you have to rfp at supranational.com. Um, and I wish you all the best for this RFP season. Thank you.